Hey friends, welcome back to another speed build in my Rebuilding the Sims 2 in the Sims 4 series. And today I'm building the Monty Ranch uh, for the Monty family who lives in Veronaville in the Sims 2. And this is pretty much the last build in uh, the Veronaville uh, part of the Sims 2. I'm debating if I want to do any uh, other builds within Windenburg since I'm uh, doing all of the Veronaville houses uh, in Windenburg in The Sims 4, um, but I don't think I'm going to do any of the commercial lots from uh, Veronaville, uh, just since they aren't really that interesting. Like, one of them's a grocery store, and we don't really have grocery stores in The Sims 4, so it doesn't seem super necessary, and they're not really as cool looking as the other uh, kind of builds in uh in veronaville so yeah probably won't be doing any other ones so this is it and i think this is actually a really good one to end on i'm uh really happy with how this turned out so you'll have to let me know what you think so if you aren't familiar with the monty family or with kind of the story of veronaville it's basically based off of shakespeare's works uh, primarily romeo and juliet uh, so the Monty family and the Caps, uh, they are kind of feuding families and uh, the Montys, this, the house that I'm building right now, uh, Romeo Monty uh, lives here and uh, Juliet Cap, uh, they are, uh, you know, interested and involved with each other uh, despite the family's best interests um, or best efforts, I guess. So the family who lives in this house uh, includes Patricio, Isabella, Romeo, and Mercutio. Uh, so Patricio and Isabella are the grandparents. They're kind of the you know, leaders of the family. Uh, and then they had three kids, uh, Bianca, Antonio, and Claudio. Um, so I did a house for Bianca, which I will link. Um, she actually doesn't have a you know specific house in The Sims 2 when you start. Uh, she's just like available as a family to move in somewhere. Um, so I built her kind of like a tiny house that's, uh, uh, she's kind of interested in cooking, so it was kind of tailored for that. And then Antonio, um, he has uh, two kids and I built a house for him. Um, and I also built a restaurant because uh, he is supposed to own a family restaurant and he works at that. Um, so, and then his wife was actually, well, she died kind of mysteriously in, in they think it's part of this feud. Um, so she's gone um, and he has two kids. And then uh, Claudio, um, who is the father of Romeo and Mercutio, he has also died along with his wife. Um, so yeah, so the two kids are basically orphaned. They're living with their grandparents now. Um, they also think that was part of the feud. So um, very interesting lore and storytelling there. So here in the build, uh, the house is very, uh, you know, Italian inspired, kind of like a villa sort of feel to it, uh, which is interesting because all of the, well, I guess it's really just, <laughs> just this house of the Montes, it has that sort of look to it. And then all of the caps, uh, they lived in like a different part of Veronaville that was, uh, uh, pretty much all Tudor style houses. So I made all of their houses like that. And then I made all of the Monty family houses, uh, more of like an Italian, uh, Mediterranean inspired look to them. Um, and I put all of the Monty uh, families on the island in Windenburg. Um, I thought, you know, maybe it's kind of like they're, they found, they found this uh, island, you know, their ancestors did, and they've just kind of lived there for forever. Um, and then the caps are kind of in like the countryside part of Windenburg. Um, and I think that worked out really well. Um, but yeah, so with it being kind of like an Italian inspired villa, I also wanted to do um, a vineyard and nectar making. So I'll do that in a little bit. Um, and right now I'm working on a uh, horse barn. Um, I will actually, uh, you know, move in some horses with the family. Um, I did already create the family uh, in Creative Sims, so they are on the gallery if you'd like to download them. Um, and there's actually, I did each part of the Monty family separately since it'd be uh, too many Sims to do it once. Well, actually, I guess I could have done all eight of the Sims, but I couldn't have done the horses. Um, but yeah, so all, all three of them are separate on the gallery if you want to download them. Um, and yeah, so they will have uh, two horses 
Um, and then there's like an empty one um, if you want to move in a third one or, you know, whatever. And I was going to do four uh, horse, you know, stables, but um, I didn't think it was like super necessary. Plus I wanted some more space for some of the other items uh, from the pack. And then here is where I'm building a nectar making space. Uh, so the upstairs will have a, a couple of different nectar making items. I don't, I don't remember what they're actually called. Uh, and then also a bar um, so you can you know, taste the nectar and, and do all of that. And then there will also be a cellar uh, to store it all. And I was kind of looking around uh, for inspiration for both the barn and this one from like um, different, you know, Italian barns. Um, and I saw one that had this, um, you know, kind of almost like a steeple on the top, uh, which I thought was really interesting. So um, I did that. Maybe, you know, this used to be like a chapel or something that they've converted or, you know, who knows. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and yeah, the, the horse barn, especially with that stone, um, I think felt very Italian, um, at least from the reference photos that I found. Uh, so I thought that looked uh, really nice. And yeah, I was originally going to use some uh, horse ranch windows, but you know, I thought it would make more sense just to use the, the ones that I'm using in the rest of the house, uh, for at least for this part. Um, I did use quite a bit of horse ranch windows uh, and whatnot for the barn. Um, and I did use the horse ranch door for this nectar space just because I, I like that one better. I thought that looked uh, pretty nice. So um, I did keep that. And I think this build took about four and a half hours total. So um, pretty good amount of time <laughs> to do all of this. Um, at least that, and that's just like what I actually recorded. Uh, I did spend a little bit of time, you know, off camera. Uh, making some edits like i went around and i recolored all of the arches and windows and stuff in the main house uh, just to make them darker so they contrasted more with the kind of stucco and i actually made the house itself larger uh, just since the original version was fairly small and the layout was kind of strange uh, there were like several very small rooms that i wasn't really sure what you would use them for because um, they were just empty <laughs> in the original uh, and then they had like a whole room, like a whole very, like pretty large room that was dedicated to the um, urns from the uh, parents of Romeo and Mercutio. Uh, so I was like, I don't know, I don't know if that's super necessary. Um, so yeah, I, ex I expanded the floor plan a bit. I also basically wrapped around the, um, I don't know what you call it, where it has like all the arches that are just open. Um, I basically just made it so it goes all the way around the house instead of just the three sides uh, in the original version. Uh, so I thought that looked a little bit nicer. Since the original didn't have really anything like in the backyard of the house. Uh, so yeah, I kind of wrapped that around and that way I could create like a nicer patio area. Uh, and yeah, I think that worked out a lot nicer. And then uh, here is where I'm uh, creating the vineyard. And I just used this, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a debug item from Horse Ranch, um, just to make it look like a full vineyard. And then I do add in some planters off to the side. Um, so you can put in, um, you know, you can actually plant some grapes and other, um, you know, items if you'd like to. And then moving to the inside of the house, this will be the kitchen is where I'm starting off. And yeah, fairly simple, kind of basic. Um, you know, I did use some more higher end appliances and counters and all of that. And since I built this in Windenburg rather than somewhere, you know, warmer or, you know, more <laughs> just sunny and whatnot, since Windenburg does get snow and rain and all of that, uh, I made it so any door that went uh, into the actual part of the house was just a normal door rather than an open archway. Uh, so the open arches are basically just around the perimeter of the house uh, with that kind of breezeway portico thing. I'm not really sure what it's called. Uh, but yeah, all of the doors that go into the actual living space, um, those are all just like regular doors. Um, I think they're all, I think they're pretty much all the uh, kind of French doors. Uh, so yeah, wanted to make sure that that would work fine. Your sim shouldn't, you know, freeze to death or anything while they're uh, making some coffee in their kitchen. So you know, that's always nice. And I will say the one downside of this house is that since there is basically a room around the entire house, if you want to play with the walls kind of cut away, 
uh, they are just going to be completely down in the actual living space, but then like the one that goes around the whole house will stay up. Uh, so that was a little bit annoying, um, but you know, obviously it kind of depends on how you play, if you keep the walls up or if you put them all the way down. Um, so you might have to make some changes there. And the original dining room was just kind of open to the elements. It didn't have the wall on the left here. Uh, so I did, you know, obviously I walled that in, so it was a normal room. Um, and then I also added in a bar and uh, just some pictures and everything. Um, I did keep all of the walls the same sort of color and texture, um, which, you know, not the most exciting, but, you know, it's pretty common in, uh, you know, in like a real house like this. Uh, plus the original, all of the walls and everything were all the same color. Um, but I did try to switch it up a bit with the floor tiles. Uh, so like the kind of main living spaces have this sort of orange one. Um, the bathrooms had a slightly different one. And then um, the some of the other spaces had that kind of lighter stone. Uh, just to, you know, vary it up a little bit at least. And yeah, so here is the uh, living room. And I started uh, with that, uh, with the uh, bookcases from uh, the Book Nook kit. Because uh, of course I have to use those. And I originally put some of the smaller ones under the window, but yeah, I got rid of those because, I don't know, it just didn't really look as good as I was hoping it would. <laughs> uh, and then this uh, this room kind of in the middle here, uh, this was originally where the urns were for uh, the teenager's parents. Um, but, you know, obviously not, not a great use of a whole room. So instead I just kind of turned it into uh, like a skill building activity room. Um, you know, got a piano and a computer. I imagine this computer is for the grandparents because uh, each of the teens will have their own. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to put in a bunch of different uh, different uh, skill and activity items in here. I got like the card table. I thought that would, you know, make a lot of sense for, um, you know, especially for like the older couple. They, maybe they love playing cards together and, and whatnot. So yeah, I think this room was like a really great, um, a really great way to use that space. And this bathroom here, fairly simple. Um, it's attached to Mercutio's room, will be the one next to it. Um, and then this one will ha has the door into kind of the rest of the living space. Um, and then Romeo, he kind of lucks out. He has his own like ensuite bathroom with without like the other door on the other side. So uh, yeah, he gets uh, a little bit more privacy. Um, but yeah, so here is Mercutio's room. And uh, he is, uh, so his traits, when I created him in The Sims 4, um, I made him a goofball and active. He was very like into uh, fitness and whatnot in The Sims 2. So that's kind of the route that I went with him. Uh, and yeah, so he, um, yeah, he likes sports. I kind of went that route. I gave him uh, a pretty nice gaming PC and a bunch of posters and stuff on his wall. Uh, just to kind of illustrate that a little bit more. And I was really happy when I found that rug because it really tied the room together uh, with like the black and the uh, sort of beige tan colors in it uh, with like the wall colors. And then I used the blue as an accent for um, some strip lighting that I'll do here in a minute, uh, kind of along the you know top of the ceiling. Uh, so that worked out really well. Um, also with the curtains, I, I did blue for those. I thought that uh, worked out really well. And yeah, I did a clothing rack over here. Uh, maybe, you know, he's a little bit more into, um, having a good personal style and all of that. So, um, I went with that, uh, item from high school years, um, and then some like boxes and some shoes and stuff there. And I thought that, uh, worked out really nicely. And the downside with having these arches all around the perimeter of the house is that, uh, really annoying glitch that's still in the game with them like with the walls basically going through the like arches and doors and stuff so um, yeah that's annoying you'll probably have to adjust those every once in a while and now I'm working on Romeo's bedroom uh, and when I created him in create a sim I made him romantic of course and adventurous uh, and I went with kind of this industrial vibe for his room uh, I imagine that he is like one of those guys who thinks they're you know way more interesting and mature and they're trying to be more sophisticated than they really are so uh, i wanted his bedroom to feel maybe a little bit more grown up than uh mercutio's 
um, even though you know he's just a just a silly teen. Um, but yeah, and uh, I imagine he is really into film uh, and maybe writing. Um, he gives me like film major energy. You know, no no shade to any film majors watching, but you know, there's some out there who have a certain sort of energy to them. So uh, that's kind of the uh, direction I went with with his character. Um, and yeah, he he will have his own uh, ensuite. That other door I'll get rid of here in a second. Um, yeah, I put in some different movie posters in the bedroom and in his bathroom. Uh, just kind of uh, put that storyline through, I guess. And I wasn't really sure what to do with this space. It was a little bit awkward, so I just put in a flower arranging table and the woodworking bench. I thought that was kind of a, a good use for that space since I wasn't really sure what else to do with it. Uh, and then I just put in a small, uh, small bathroom, a powder room basically, off the kitchen there, and I thought that was uh, a good use of that space. And then it had this sort of semi-courtyard area. You know, it's not completely enclosed. Um, but yeah, it's got this kind of center area, and I... Um, I'll end up keeping the planters that I put underneath in the sheltered area and the table, um, but I'll get rid of the bigger planters uh, later on when I do the landscaping. Uh, just since there's already a lot of planters, I didn't think it was that necessary, so I do something a little bit different with that. Uh, and then this is the primary bedroom for the grandparents. Um, I you know, kept it fairly traditional. Uh, I imagine that Patricio and Isabella are very, you know, they have very... Uh, traditional values and roles within the family uh, so yeah I'll just <laughs> I'll leave it at that but uh, yeah I kind of went with uh, these leather chairs I thought those were nice and um, this kind of darker wood furniture uh, I thought worked well in here kind of coordinated with the windows and door uh, coloring so yeah and then it, they have their own ensuite uh, bathroom, uh, which uh, I couldn't quite fit a tub in since the window placement was, um, you know, kind of in the way and then the door was at an angle, so I uh, couldn't really fit that in very well. Uh, but yeah, they have a, a shower and, and all of that, so um, perfectly usable, but maybe not quite ideal for a, like a primary suite. Um, but I also like that they have that kind of separate walkway uh, over to their, their room. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. And I didn't show it in the footage, but originally above their room, there was like an outdoor rooftop deck, um, which I originally did build and then I got rid of it later. Uh, just since there's going to be so much living space, you know, on the actual grounds of the estate um, that I didn't think it was really necessary and it was kind of weird. I don't know. It just didn't really look that great. Um, so it just has like a normal roof on top of it. And then, yeah, which I think ended up looking better anyway. Uh, so yeah, so out here um, I do the pool and then I do this kind of uh, barbecue area uh, and I uh, <laughs> I realized when I was like doing the screenshots and doing some play testing uh, for some reason when I told them to cook in the kitchen they would come all the way out here to use these counters uh, which is just uh, so annoying because it's so far away it just didn't make any sense. Uh, so what I ended up doing is just uh, turning the counters around um, so you still have the same look but um, they won't they won't use them it seemed to work they just continued to use the kitchen counters like normal uh, so that was really annoying um, so yeah the counters outside won't be usable if you download this um, which honestly is probably fine because they're not really doing any actual cooking outside when you're grilling um, or at least you're not, you know, you're not using the counters to like mix things um, if you're using the barbecue usually. So should be fine, but in case you're wondering, that's why. And I don't think I kept it in the footage, um, but I didn't, I didn't do a lot of furnishing in the sort of, you know, wraparound breezeway area. I just put in some benches. Um, yeah, you can kind of see them scattered in there. Uh, yeah, I kind of cut that out, but yeah, I wasn't really sure what else to put in there, so just put in some benches. Um, but yeah, now I'm working on the landscaping, and I, you know, fast forwarded because I pulled out a whole bunch of different things. And I don't know, I really like how the landscaping turned out here. I did a lot of different, um, I tried to, you know, use a, a, a good variety of plants to kind of layer things and use different colors to make it feel um, very lush. You know, I imagine they take a lot of pride in 
in this. So yeah, I wanted to make sure it, it looked nice. I used some vines um, here and there to um, add a little bit more height to certain areas. And yeah, most of these plants are debug. Um, I don't know, they have a lot of really great debug plants that I wish were just in the normal catalog. Um, but it is nice that they're, you know, free. Not that it really matters for this build since they have plenty of money, but yeah, for, you know, whenever I do budget builds, that's always uh, always nice to do. Um, and yeah, so I did a lot more, I don't, I don't know, I guess like more like manicured or like planned planters than I normally do. I thought that would fit in a little bit better with the sort of um, vibe that this place has. So, because uh, the original one did have a couple of kind of, um, a couple of different planter areas that were uh, trimmed out with like a, a like that small fence. Um, so I did that kind of toward the front and then I didn't do it quite as manicured in the back since you know they're not really it's not really as important I guess. Um, so I used the that really great hedge over by the over by the barn. I thought that one looked really nice over there um, and I do some yeah do some kind of uh, shrubs around the barbecue area and kind of along the sides and edges of the uh, house there. I think that uh, worked out really nicely. So now that I'm, you know, done with Veronaville in The Sims 2, I have decided that I'm going to keep going and I'm going to do uh, River Blossom Hills from The Sims 2, uh, which is the world that came with Seasons uh, in that game. Because uh, there are actually, there's actually a lot of lots <laughs> that were in that world uh, when it shipped. Uh, plus, I think there's like six different households that were, you know, like already part of the world. Uh, so I've decided that I'm going to do all of those in Brindleton Bay. It's not really the ideal world for that one. Um, just since uh, River Blossom Hills is supposed to be a bit more rural than, um, than I would say even Brindleton Bay is. Um, but I think it'll work out fine. There weren't really any other worlds that I saw working quite as well. Um, maybe Willow Creek, but even Willow Creek feels more like a suburb than like a rural area. Um, so yeah, I think Brindleton Bay will work well. Um, I considered doing Henford on Bagley, uh, since that is, you know, obviously it's very much the countryside and everything. Um, but I wanted a more American styled, uh, world for this, uh, since that's kind of the style that River Blossom Hills was, uh, in The Sims 2. Um, so yeah, I, I think it'll work well. It'll be a little bit different, obviously kind of a different vibe, but, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I've, I've already, um, I've already done the actual build for one of them that'll come out, uh, next Tuesday. So you'll have to keep an eye out for that. And yeah, it should be, uh, should be a good time. Um, there are some very unusual houses that came in that world. So, uh, I'm really excited to share them with you. Um, and yeah, so my next build, uh, so since I, I won't be doing, uh, you know, a Sims 2 build for my next video, that one, um, will be kind of like a tiny house village that I did. Um, village is kind of a strong word. It was basically just four tiny houses on the same lot. Uh, but yeah, I think that, uh, that worked out well. Um, those ones can uh, very easily be used as, um, like a residential rental property if you'd like. Um, so yeah, you'll have to keep an eye out for that one too. And yeah, now I am just finishing up by doing all of the lighting around the lot. And here in the bedroom, this is where I decided to do the strip lighting in kind of that blue color to uh, coordinate with the rug and the curtains and everything. So um, I thought that worked out really well for his room. Um, I do some strip lighting in Romeo's room as well, um, but I did, uh, I did red around the desk and then I did kind of like a warm white uh, for the rest of that. Um, which was fine. I don't know. Maybe I should have just done red for all of it. It's kind of weird that there's like a seam right in the middle. Um, but that much red was, was kind of a lot. So, you know, obviously you can change that if you'd like, but yeah, that's what I went with. And if you're new to this series, uh, you'll quickly find out that I do not, uh, you know, hold back when it comes to using different packs. Uh, so I use a lot of different, uh, even a lot of different lighting, um, from a lot of different packs. Uh, so yeah, I don't hold back with this series, uh, but with the, uh, uh, at least the first one in the kind of River Blossom Hills, Brindleton Bay one, I only used three packs for that one. So that's kind of limited. Um, I think I did a limited one with the tiny house village too. Um, so I try to sprinkle those in as well, just to, you know, make them a little bit more accessible since I know it's, 
very expensive to own all of the packs. Um, so, you know, I've collected them over the last 10 years, which is still wild to me that The Sims 4 has been around that long. But that is going to do it for me today. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and please subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you so much. Have a great day.